Hello folks, Simon here and welcome back to the channel. Now there's going to be two things covered in today's video. First of all, I'm going to be showing you tutorial style, how you can actually set up remote play on your PS5 so that you can play the games on your PS5 on another device such as a computer. And then secondly, we're going to check out whether this is just a gimmick or whether it actually is a useful feature, a feature that performs well. So I hope the video helps you. If it does, don't forget to drop a like and perhaps even subscribe to the channel. And here we go with the tutorial part of the video. The first step then is setting up our PS5 console in order to enable remote play in the first place. It is very simple. All we need to do is once signed into our PlayStation Network account on the console, head over to the settings icon. And from here, we're going to pop down to the system option. And then we're just going to, first of all, head down to power saving and make sure that we are uh, going to be okay here. So what we're going to do is head over to features available in rest mode and just double check that both of these options, stay connected to the internet and enable turning on the PS5 from network, are enabled. So this is on, this is off. We want them both on. Okay, and once we've done that, they may already be on anyhow. Uh, we're going to head up to remote play, still on the system menu option. And then we're just going to toggle this, enable remote play, turn that on. That's it. For the vast majority of you, that is going to be remote play enabled on the PS5 console with no other work required. We just need to then set up any device we want to stream to. Now, if it doesn't work for whatever reason, we might need to go through the link device process. But I'll talk about that a little bit later on since that's not going to apply to many of you. But with this done, we can head over to the device we want to stream to, in my case a Windows PC, and start setting up the software over there. Now, you are going to need to download the Remote Play software onto the computer you're going to be streaming the PS5 to. And I'm going to leave a link to the software in the video description. But you do get the choice to download the software for Windows PC or Mac, which is nice that it works on both. I'm going to choose Windows PC here. And on this page, we get the system requirements. Now, fortunately, they are quite low. So even if you're running a fairly old machine, you might still be able to get a good setup going with remote play here. And that's because the computer that you're streaming to isn't really doing any work. It is just, I suppose, receiving a video feed. And all of the gameplay itself is still being done on the PS5. And then it's been sent over. So I'm going to be using an AMD Ryzen CPU, uh, which I hope works because for some reason, apparently the minimum requirements are you need an Intel here, but I don't know what that's about. I'm sure AMD will be fine. And you get some instructions here, but I'm going to guide you through the process. Uh, you will need your USB cable in order to connect to uh, the DualSense controller to your computer. But I'm going to try and see if I can set that up via Bluetooth. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, we're going to select agree here, which we have to do in order to download the software. The installation itself is a very simple process. You just need to go through the typical next and install selections. And once that's installed, Remote Play will open for the first time automatically. And we can go ahead and sign into our PlayStation Network account. And then we can select confirm and continue or choose limited data, which is what I'm going to do. And then select confirm and continue. And then we actually get the choice now with this updated software as to whether we want to connect to our PS5 or to the PS4. And of course, we're going to, for the sake of this tutorial, go to PS5. But before we do that, there's a few settings or at least one setting I want to go over with you. So if you go to the cog here, uh, first of all, you can note that text entry has used keyboard by default, uh, which is very helpful. So we'll keep that active. But then on video quality for remote play, this is going to depend on your particular network setup. Now, the default is set to 540. Uh, which is not the highest resolution in the world, but you do have the option to change that to 360, 720, and 1080p. Now, obviously, the higher resolution you set, the more data has to be uh, transferred across your network, and the more likely you are to, in, uh, to encounter stuttering, lag, or FPS drops. So you're just going to have to play about with this setting until you find the one that suits you best. But if you have a good network setup, don't, then don't feel like you have to uh, stay on 540p. If you want to get that higher quality stream and your network can support it, then, you know, do start by, you know, on 1080p. That's what I'm going to do. And if it stutters, then we can always drop this at a later time. That's no problem. And you also get separate settings here for PS5 and PS4. So let's go ahead now and connect. Just before you start, make sure, of course, you do have your controller connected. Um, if you're playing a PS4 game, you can use the PS4 DualShock controller instead. I'm using the PS5 one here. Let's go ahead and select PS5. We'll select OK 
on that little prompt. That's just telling us that we need to have Remote Play enabled on the PS5, which of course we do. And there we have it. It looks like that's the whole process complete. And yes, the controller's working absolutely fine. So let's go ahead here and load up Astro's Playroom. And I've got to say that video is looking beautiful. It really is. So obviously what we're looking at here uh, on the screen is a video of the gameplay that's taking place on PS5. Uh, but I want to be checking out the input lag because that's always going to be the stumbling block to any remote play setup. So I'm going to tell you right now that it might not be perfect because both my PS5 and computer are set up on a wireless network. Okay, so you're going to get best results if you can connect both up via LAN cable. But the menu here is as responsive as it is when I'm playing normally on PS5. I'm not noticing any difference. Okay, I'm 37 years old. Input lag to me. You know, my reactions aren't what they once were, let's put it that way. I can't really keep up with you young guns. So a little bit of input lag here is not going to be noticeable by me, by, as perhaps it would be by some of you. But I'm honestly not noticing any difference. Let's go ahead and jump in game. A lot more data being transferred there, and we'll see how that plays out. But yeah, I've got it set to 1080p. I haven't got HDR enabled because I don't have it set up on Windows. But the actual game here is running as smooth as butter it really is it's looking amazing for 1080p through remote play uh let's pull off a few moves here shall we yeah i'll tell you what i'm not really noticing any difference i know i've only been doing this for less than a minute or so and i suppose a, a good test is going to take a lot longer than that but so far i'm impressed one of the reasons I never really used the remote play feature on PS4 was because it was just so buggy for me. Uh, no matter how I seemed to set up the network, it would just be stuttering and lagging all over the place. And even, you know, when I first started remote play, even within the first few seconds, it would be doing that. And it just made the whole experience not really that enjoyable. But like I say, apart from the fact that this is 1080p and not 4K, the actual experience is pretty much the same for me here as if I was playing on the PS5 console directly without streaming to a PC. So yeah, first impressions are that I am actually impressed with this. I really am. And yeah, I could see myself spending quite a bit of time here in remote play as a means to play the PS5 when I don't have access to the console. Because the feature works, it actually makes it worthwhile doing so rather than just being a gimmick that you're never going to use. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is a couple of other tests, I think. We're going to go ahead and uh, stream to another PC that I'm going to set up some ways away from the PS5 and we'll see if we still get a similar experience. Now, I noted earlier that sometimes the setup process is not always as simple as it has been for us today. And occasionally when you're trying to connect your streaming device to the PS5, it's not able to actually find the console. If that's the situation for you, then head over to the system option on PS5, back to remote play and select link device here. And what that's going to do is for five minutes provide this eight digit code that you can input on your streaming device in order to connect over the internet. Now, be aware if you do this, you are going to be suffering a lot more input lag. So games such as first person shooters are not really going to be playable through this particular setup. However, if you can't get remote play functioning the normal way, then this is another means that you can do so. It also means that you can set up on a different network if you're away from home, for example, and your PS5 is still at home. But if you're setting up a device away from home, you're still going to need somebody to read you this code because you won't be able to see it if your PS5 is in a different location. But anyway, guys, that's the, uh, the, the link device setup, which is there in a pinch if you need it. Uh, but I would, of course, recommend using Remote Play over the same network wherever possible just to reduce that input lag. Okay, so Remote Play works and it seems to work well. But as of right now, all I've done is tested a PS5 uh, remote playing to my PC as they're literally right next to each other. So what happens in a more, I guess, real world test where both systems are quite a ways apart, still on the same network, which I do believe is one of the fundamental things that remote play was built for, was for devices that are going to be able to connect to one another to the PS5 on the same network, but at a much greater distance apart. Now for this test, I'm going to be having the PS5 here in my garage, which is where I usually do all my YouTube stuff, still connected to the Wi-Fi network, and then as I come across into my house, 
I'm going to be having my laptop connected to the PS5 also through the same Wi-Fi network, but at a good distance apart. Now, this is going to be a good test because not only are we in two separate buildings here, but my house is very old. There is no drywall. Everything is brick, stone and mortar, like the worst enemy for Wi-Fi. But I have worked hard previously in getting my network set up across uh, my house and my garage and what have you. And so now I do pretty much get, well, perfect coverage in terms of Wi-Fi and that just all over. If you want to see my network setup, I've done a video about that previously on my alt channel. I'll leave a link to it if you want to check it out. Now, I do apologize that the next part of this video has been filmed on my aging iPhone 6S, but hopefully it will get the point across. So here I am then just loading up the remote play software on my laptop. And the first thing I notice is that it really is just as responsive as it was when both devices were next to each other. Now, as I'm opening up Astro's Playroom once again here, one thing I will mention is that I suggested that I would try out using the controller via Bluetooth. And this laptop does have a Bluetooth uh, network card built into it. So while I was able to connect the controller to the laptop, unfortunately, it did not work with Remote Play. So at least unless Sony decides to add something into the software that will fix that, for now, you will still need to use the cable. Now, if you're doing this Remote Play on another device, say streaming to an Apple iPad or an Android device, then you can actually connect the PS5 controller to that device using Bluetooth, but for whatever reason on Windows and I assume Mac, uh, you can't do that as of now. Anyhow, getting into the experience itself, I'm going to be honest with you guys, this is blooming fantastic. It really is. I know it's not going to be coming through as perfectly for you on the iPhone 6 video here as it was for me as I was there playing, but honestly guys, this is just it exceeded my expectations, I'll be honest with you. It really, really did. I was expecting some lag, maybe quite a bit of lag, in fact, and I didn't get any. I couldn't detect any input lag as I was pressing the buttons on the DualSense controller. The actions were happening to me, you know, in the same sense that they would when I'm playing on the PS5 directly, just as they were when both devices were next to each other a few moments ago. And I've also got the uh, video set to 1080p here on my laptop, just as I did uh, when I first showed you how to set up Remote Play a few moments ago as well. So yeah, this is running fantastically. And as I said, you know, I didn't really use the Remote Play option on PS4 because it just wasn't a buttery smooth experience. And I'd rather just go the extra hog and fire, you know, the PS4 up in order to play the games uh, and just not play them, you know, in a more convenient location. But from what I'm seeing here with the PS5 version of Remote Play, I suspect I'm actually going to be using this, as in to play games, not just to make YouTube videos for you guys. I'm going to be using this myself because it's fantastic, as I say. It really is. It works far better than I thought it would. My only real complaint, as I say, is the fact that we can't connect the controller via Bluetooth, which means we do have to have this cable trailing. A little bit annoying, but hopefully something that Sony can fix. Now, of course, no matter how good the software is that Sony give us in order to provide this functionality of remote play, it is ultimately still going to depend on your network setup. And as I say, I think I've got a pretty decent network going. I don't have the fastest internet speeds. We only have 30 meg down and 6 meg up. But this isn't really dependent on internet speeds as long as both devices are on the same network. Now, if you're going to wanting to be doing remote play where the PS5 is on a different network to your streaming device, for example, you know, because you've traveled away from home or what have you, then that is still possible. I mentioned that earlier, but I wouldn't expect the same kind of quality, the same kind of performance that we're seeing now. But, you know, if you do have to play your PS5 games in that way, if you really don't want to not play them, then uh, you can just drop the quality down from 1080p to 5, whatever it was, 540 or even lower 360, I think. So you're not going to be getting the best visual uh, experience, but at least the game should still be playable, uh, even across different networks there. So it's nice to have that option. Uh, I believe that, uh, what was it? I did a video on it before, Miracast or something for the Xbox streaming from Windows 10. And you had to have both devices connected to the same Wi-Fi network. So that was far more limiting than what we have with the PlayStation Remote Play. 
So there we have some of my initial thoughts and experiences with the PS5 remote play functionality. But for those of you that have also tested out and used this particular feature of the new next gen console, is it something that you're impressed with as I am? Or is it something that you couldn't quite get working correctly? If you have any issues, by the way, guys, try sharing some of them in the comment section. Maybe either myself or others might be able to help you uh, just get on the right track if things aren't working as you think they should be. But folks, thanks so much for stopping by and checking out this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's helped you. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.